Alternative media sources have long held that the so-called rebels in Syria are primarily identified with Islamic jihadists, clearly members of Al-Qaeda. With YouTube glutted with videos of these so-called freedom fighters, as Obama likes to call them, flying the Al-Qaeda flag, executing and cannibalizing Syrian army forces, and openly massacring Christian villages, the mainstream media and Barack Obama have finally had to admit that the United States is in fact supporting and arming terrorists. This proved to be a problem for Barack Obama, as Al-Qaeda, since 1999, has been a State Department-designated terrorist group, and abetting and or arming them is considered a violation of U.S. Code 18 U.S.C. Section 2339A, a treasonous act carrying a penalty of life in prison. Barack Obama, on September 16, 2013, signed an executive order essentially exempting himself from the law. The executive order is clearly illegal, but regardless, that would mean that all weapon transfers to the Al-Qaeda Syrian rebels prior to September 16, 2013 would be illegal. Obama has made a show of pretending that only humanitarian aid has been given to the Al-Qaeda rebels prior to September 16th, that only after the executive order was signed did he begin to transfer weapons. We know this to be patently false. The CIA has been supplying weapons to the Syrian rebels for at least two years, formally using the Benghazi CIA annex as a base of operation. This was the primary reason Obama could not send in help to the Americans under attack at the Benghazi consulate on September 11, 2012. And this was the primary reason for the ludicrous story about a mob storming the consulate over an anti-Muslim YouTube video. As the Obama administration has finally had to acknowledge, it was a planned terrorist attack, more than likely with connections to the Egyptian Muslim Brotherhood. The most recent illegal arms shipment occurred on August 21, 2013, just hours after the chemical weapons attack blamed on Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. Many, including Rush Limbaugh, admit that it is likely the Obama regime's al-Qaeda rebels were the ones who gassed 1,429 civilians on August 21st and not Syrian dictator Bashar al-Assad. Limbaugh cites an article published by Yosef Bodansky, senior editor of Defense and Foreign Affairs magazine, as a basis for Obama's al-Qaeda rebels being behind the chemical weapons attack. But the article also details the huge weapons transfer that occurred on August 21st and the massive planning that was behind it. Odansky's sources revealed that on August 13th and 14th, there was a high-level meeting in Turkey that included leaders of the Al-Qaeda Syrian rebels, along with U.S., Turkish, and Qatari officials, in which the Obama regime planned a bombing campaign after a quote-unquote war-changing moment that was set to occur within days. This war-changing moment, of course, turned out to be the gassing of 1,429 people, including hundreds of children, to be blamed on Bashar al-Assad. The plan, according to Bodansky, before public opinion stopped Obama's illegal war in its tracks, was for the U.S. to engage in a massive bombing campaign beginning August 29th in response to the world's outrage of al-Assad gassing his own people. While Obama was bombing Syria into oblivion, the Syrian rebels were to take over al-Assad's strongholds, bolstered with the huge influx of weapons. According to Bodansky, a staggering 1,000 tons of weapons were distributed to the Syrian al-Qaeda rebels in the hours after the false flag chemical weapons attack on August 21st, including thousands of shoulder-fired missiles capable of taking down a commercial airliner. Our own CIA oversaw the massive illegal weapons distribution. Barack Obama is clearly guilty of violating U.S. Code 18 U.S.C. Section 2339A, supplying weapons to terrorists. This is grounds for impeachment, 